This is Selma Schimmel in Los Angeles at the Oncology Nursing Society ONS 11th Research Conference. And our discussions continue. Now I'm joined by actually an old friend of the group room, That's Oncology right. Nurse Linda Sarna. How are you, Linda? I'm delighted to be here. And you are uh, a woman of distinction here at ONS. You, you are the past ONS Distinguished Researcher, and you have uh, an expertise in lung cancer and smoking prevention and cessation. That's right. It's interesting. This is the 11th meeting. They meet about every two years, and I was at the very first meeting, and my research there was on people dying with lung cancer. And now, my, as the later part of my career, I, I have focused on quality of life issues of people living with uh, lung cancer in particular. And I couldn't ignore the tobacco issue and actually how continued tobacco use also complicated their treatment and their recovery and even end of life care. So with this conference, I'm talking about some of the research that we're doing uh, to try to translate evidence into practice and really help nurses with patients uh, quitting smoking in the hospital. Let's talk about some of the cessation programs and let's begin with the telephone quit line. Yes, one of the, um, uh, here we're presenting some data for uh, a study funded by the Centers for Disease Control called Helping Smokers Quit. What we wanted to do to, was to translate the evidence-based practice tobacco dependence treatment guideline into the hospital setting so that every smoker who interacted with a nurse was able to get the resources to quit. Now we know from our studies that, uh, from the research, that it's people will make quit attempts in the hospital because you can't smoke anymore. And they may be smoke free, but when they go home, it's very difficult and they can lapse back into their addiction. And so we know that one of the things that needs to happen is that there needs to be some follow-up. Now with our healthcare situation, the way it is, it's hard for the nurse or the doctor or anyone to give that call, how are you doing? However, the telephone quit line, 1-800-QUIT-NOW, is a free resource for smokers throughout the country. They can call up the quit line every single state they can get uh, print material, and they'll also be able to speak with a trained counselor who will um, ask them about their history of smoking. The, most smokers have tried to quit before what they've used and, and explore with them different options. And we know that the gold standard right now is providing people with counseling and support and also using some of the FDA approved uh, medications. So in our study, what we wanted to do, this is uh, the baseline information. We decided to go to three states. We went to nurses in California, nurses in Win Indiana, and nurses in West Virginia. Obviously in California, we have the second to the lowest smoking prevalence in the state, but still in LA County alone, we have over a million smokers. West Virginia, Indiana, very high smoking prevalence. We wanted to see if there was a difference in the culture of interventions by the nurses. What we found was not surprising, was that overall, we've done much better with asking about tobacco use and very poor about intervening to actually help people quit. And very, very few nurses actually refer smokers to the quit line. They don't know about this resource and that's the goal of this research eventually, is to make sure everyone's aware. When someone calls the <clears throat> quit line, will the nurse then work with the caller to ensure that they get into the proper position or program to help if they should need one of these FDA approved uh, drugs to help them through the process or whatever modality they choose? Is there that kind of follow-up support? Well, each state operates a little bit differently. In California, for example, if a smoker calls the quit line, uh, they must initiate the call. In other states, they can fax a referral to the quit line, so the nurse actually, and the quit line calls the patient. Many quit lines do have a um, procedure, a format to give feedback to physicians. Some quit lines also are able to uh, provide um, pharmacotherapy, especially for low-income or Medicare patients, but not all. So it is a little different state by state. If you're able to overcome the, the 
the, the, the urge, the craving. What's going on with you physiologically as you eliminate that nicotine from your system and your ability to sustain a smoke-free life? So let me approach this from uh, a couple of um, ways. First of all, the craving, unfortunately, can last for years. It's a funny kind of thing because tobacco, nicotine addiction is really a brain disease. You have receptors in your brain, which we didn't appreciate until really recently, that when you get that hit from a cigarette, it takes about 9 to 11 seconds to go directly to your brain. And it lights up those nicotine receptors, and it feels good. And when those nicotine receptors don't get the nicotine, they feel bad, and you get the withdrawal. What happens when you quit smoking is that the nicotine receptors sort of quiet down. They get used to not being fed uh, the nicotine. You're on the nicotine replacement. Most of the over-the-counter medicine lasts about three months. The nicotine replacement, does it stimulate the same brain receptors? Yeah, it, it, sort, it sort of, it, it helps blunt the withdrawal. It doesn't get the same high as a cigarette. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some other medications that don't replace nicotine, but they decrease your desire for smoking. So, so they also influence the brain, and you're just not as interested. So those are very important medications, too. And generally... Uh, people take those a little longer. They also uh, usually need a loading dose until you um, have a blood level and then you can start. Whereas the nicotine replacement medications, you put out that cigarette and then you start. And that's why it's so, it's so important in the hospital because when people go into the hospital, smoker or not, they're going to be in a forced quit attempt when they're in an environment where we, you cannot smoke inside hospitals. One thing we know from the Surgeon General report, though, is that there's no such thing as a safe cigarette, and there's no such thing as a safe level of smoking. It's sort of like if you look just a little bit of heroin, just a little bit of arsenic, it still does many, many damaging things uh, to many parts of your body. And again, as an oncology nurse, we know it's associated with 30% of all cancer deaths. 30%, not just lung cancer cervical cancer, leukemias, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, head and neck cancer, esophageal cancer. Bladder could, cancer. Uh, bladder cancer. I could go on, and people aren't as, aware, aren't as aware of all of those other cancers. When you look at everything that's out there, what's the sort of the pecking order of the easiest uh, cessation product for the consumer? Well, first of all, there's no single best product. It's the best product for that person. And many smokers will have had experience with different types of products, and they may have, uh, the, they can be exposed to a, a variety of these things, and again, they're over the counter. The nicotine gum is something that you can do in a social setting. The nicotine patch is something that uh, is sort of a continuous release uh, over time. It doesn't, people aren't aware. Uh, for some people, they like that hand-to-mouth, so the inhaler that kind of looks like a, a cigarette is good. The lozenge works uh, for other people. There are lots of choices. Now, I know in some of the oral derivatives <clears throat> that you are able to uh, initially still smoke a little bit to begin to wean off, but on the over-the-counter ones, I believe there are warnings that say do not smoke. Right. All, right. all of the, if it says nicotine replacement, you need to put out that cigarette. What happens to the person that will take a drag on a cigarette while they've got one of these? Heart race, blood pressure goes up, you're getting double nicotine. All right, so we've talked about the, uh, the quit line program. What about some of the other ONS-related uh, cessation activities that you're involved with? Well, another one of our papers at this conference has to do with uh, smoke-free environments. Now, since the mid-1990s, hospitals have been smoke-free, but not the grounds. And now we're seeing a, a movement across the United States to really make the grounds smoke-free. Now, the good thing about having any workplace go smoke-free and the grounds is it makes it more difficult to smoke, and people quit. It's annoying. It's hard to go outside, downstairs, two blocks down, go into your car and take that cigarette. Now, if you want it, you can still do it. But the smoke-free environment really enhances quit efforts. So this is something else that the Oncology Nursing Society, I think, has been very involved in. 
is looking at a tobacco control, not just for um, all the resources to help smokers uh, quit, but also the smoke-free environment. And then the Advocacy efforts in, in terms of policy are huge. As you may know, there are some um, new packaging that's going to come out with cigarettes. They're going to look pretty different next year because they're going to have ugly pictures of what really happens to your body when you smoke. Scary pictures, poignant pictures about loved ones that are affected by smoking. So as a takeaway message for viewers, say you have a loved one who's a smoker. Mm -hmm. Say you're on the fence thinking, you know, I really do need to quit. What is your takeaway message? Give us again the quit line phone number and also the initial things a person can do to make it easier to really commit to life and health. Health care providers really can make a difference here. 1-800-QUIT-NOW is a national quit line available for free for every smoker in the United States. Quitting is tough. It takes several times before you're able to um, be smoke-free. The gold standard, the most effective way, is to both have counseling, social support, and also use the medications as prescribed um, by the FDA. So any smoker who is trying to seriously think about a, uh, a quit attempt, good for you. Don't get discouraged. Relapse is part of the quitting process. Tell your family and friends that you're quitting. Clear out your house of tobacco products. Discuss with your health care provider, your pharmacist, about the different medications to see if that will help uh, with ni nicotine withdrawal. Consider calling the quit line or being involved in other so, uh, uh, type of uh, social support. Know that the moment that you quit, you're going to get immediate health benefits, cardiovascular and peripheral vascular disease particularly. Linda, I failed to mention that you come to us from the UCLA School of Nursing where you are professor and Lulu Wolf Hassenplug Endowed Chair. So you have really gone to the, the highest level that an oncology nurse can go to. You're a full professor and well it's, it's been my privilege really to have an impact on the profession um, to raise awareness about the issues facing people, patients and family members who are living with lung cancer, and also the power of the individual nurse to make a difference in terms of tobacco control. Thank you for all the work you're doing, and I hope that the next time we meet you'll give me really great new stats. Me too. Good. Okay? Great. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank you.